Uh, totally normal. I just like hearing you pronounce my name. Okay, totally normal. <laughs> uh, but the Phillips one is different. <laughs> This is the part I absolutely can't stand. So I've done about four days of searching around for housing and found one potential option. Got an application in and uh, yeah, now we wait. This is a part I don't deal with well. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there was a lot of, actually hang on a second. So there's obviously like a lot of paperwork and stuff, getting forms filled out and all that whatnot. I actually, so I've had this new iPad for, I don't know, maybe a few months now, which oddly Apple's like one of their more powerful iPads is also the cheapest. The entry level one I think is around 300 bucks now or something, but it does support the Apple Pencil. And I found myself, it, <laughs> I found myself yesterday trying to fill out forms. And yes, I can hold a pen and write, but not for very long. And my hands cramp up and everything gets all crazy. And trying to write super small is even worse. So this thing allowed me to scan the forms into the iPad and manipulate everything easily. Because to zoom in and all that, you gotta use two fingers and eh, whatever. But the pencil seems to help. Plus it's kind of a new toy. To, play around with and distract myself. <laughs> um, anyways, it's a ridiculously nice day outside and I get the feeling I need to go somewhere and do something. So I think I might go to Goodwill. I'm not sure what else to do at this point. I'm not going to search online for housing again until probably this later this afternoon or tonight. I've seen everything on there and only that one option is the thing. So I have spoken to a few of the neighbors here and it is interesting to hear different things from different people. I don't think there's a way to go into it without sounding like I'm hating on anyone, which I'm not, but we'll just say that some of the stories between different people that may or may not be affected are different. <laughs> Anyways. I've got a list of things that I need to do, or things that need to be repaired. A large portion of that stuff was things in the house that I wanted to get set up, so we can just scratch all that off the list. There was a couple things with the van. Uh, I might play around with that since it's a nice day outside. Nothing like actually broken, just little things here and there. But for me, this is where it's important to keep busy. And when it's this nice outside, sitting around and watching YouTube videos or TV or whatever is has a fairly negative impact on mental health for me. So I think what I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna hop in the van, I'm gonna go over to Goodwill, just look around. I don't need anything, I don't need more stuff, but it's something to do. And maybe I'll find some power adapter or some random cable or something that I need. I mean like, I found this old uh, laptop battery that was actually pretty useful last time I was there. And can always use those. And if not, you can scavenge 18650s out of them. Well, not this one because it's a lipo, but anyways. Yeah, I'm gonna go somewhere. I'll be back. Well, that was annoying. Um, a bunch of people were really upset by my presence because they couldn't get their shopping carts around me. Some days it's fine here, other days not so much, but uh, yeah. The things people say are, uh, well, like the old saying, make sure your brain is engaged before you put your mouth in gear. <laughs> eh, whatever. But uh, I did manage to get a couple of cables I can use, micro USB and HDMI, so let's go find something else to do. All right, we've just arrived back from the Goodwills with my overwhelming stash of stuff. I decided on the way back what I'm gonna work on today is the van, uh, when I put the remote starter in it after I got this one, like, gosh, it's been over a year ago now, 
I didn't hook up the horn circuit and I also did not hook up the parking light indicator circuit. And I found myself uh, a number of times over the last like year or so where I could see the van but it was in a noisy environment and I was trying to remote start it but I couldn't tell if it had actually started or not. That's why they have the feature of parking lights that flash and tell you what's going on with the remote start circuit. So I remember when I installed it, I left those wires um, not dangling, but I didn't bundle them in with everything else. So I'm going to pull up a schematic for the van, and I still have the schematics for that remote start somewhere, and we're going to get that wired up. And then also maybe the horn as well. It's not really an alarm. I mean, the van has a separate alarm. Horn probably isn't necessary, but uh, yeah. Anyways, that'll take up a few hours, keep my mind busy. Um, just got an email from one of the neighbors that I haven't spoken with, so I'm going to go chat with them as well. But, yeah. Keeping busy, that's the thing. All right, so I found the installation guide. Oh, reminders, remind me in one hour. Um, yeah, installation guide for the remote start. I never put the bottom of the dash back together just because, I don't know, I don't really care. And I'd have to cut a bunch of stuff to install this anyways. But we've got our headlight switch connector here removed. It uh, plugs in right up there. It's pretty easy to get to. Really difficult to remove, though, with your fingers. I think we're all right. And this is our auxiliary harness here from the remote start. And this is the wire going through a fuse connector that we need to connect. So I'm scouring the internet because I can't find my all data login. Um, apparently, they have to mail me the credentials. Eh, whatever. But... I think this brown and white wire right here goes to our parking lamps. Now this being a Super Duty and all has this crazy auxiliary lighting system and isolating relays for the trailer hitch in the back and the turn signals and everything. So we've got main feeds that go out, but then they go into other devices and relay banks that run everything. But I think in theory, this wire here is gonna do what we need. So I'm gonna do some testing with this guy, well clip leads, and then yeah, I think we'll be good. Basically, all I have to do is stick a fuse in here, wrap this wire over, hook it up, and yeah, we're golden. Just got done chatting with the, the last neighbor that I hadn't spoke with. So, me and him are kind of in the same situation where we're trying to sort of stall as long as possible to like gather our options. And the same thing the owner said to him was pretty similar to me, to the effect of this needs to happen right now and pretty quick and the price of the house is not negotiable under any circumstance. So for him, it's basically going to put him out of business. He has a small business that he runs and this particular location and the size of the house and being able to have workspace and everything for him, there's actually some crossover with some of the stuff that I do and he does as well. But for him, it's kind of game over. So he's stalling as long as possible. Um, I have till the end of this week to give an answer about whether I'm buying the place. I know it's not going to work out, but I'm kind of using that as a tactic. Well, twofold. One, I picked a date in my mind when I was talking to the owner that was as far out or maybe a little bit further than he might appreciate just to sort of gauge the timeline that we're working with here, which, I mean, it's been a few days now, and I told him by the end of this week, and he kind of hemmed and hawed and was like, all right, I can give you that long. So that gives me two things. One, time to explore some options, and two, it tells me that he's trying to get this done quick. Because when he said ASAP, I didn't press for an actual timeline, because that gives me some, you know, well, I didn't know you meant a week, you know, ASAP to me is like a month or two. The other people over here, um, well, one of them just had a baby. The other ones, they just found out they're pregnant. So this is disrupting a lot of lives, like, seriously. Like I said before, I understand when things happen and, you know, you've got to do what you got to do, but... Anyways, back to the van. Oh, actually, I just remembered. I need to go to the parts store. Somehow I'm out of zip ties and electrical tape. So I'm going to head over to the usual scumbags and stock up on that stuff. You know, big box stores, whatever. Whatever you want to call them. I like uh, AVE's terminology on that, but 
I'm gonna go there and get some supplies, get this wiring knocked out real quick, and probably get some lunch. Developing situation, it's interesting. Oh, all the paperwork and everything submitted at that other place I was looking at, I should hear back. Well, I thought it was gonna be today, but none of my references have told me that they've called yet, so maybe tomorrow. Uh, again, this is the part that I'm not set up to deal with. I'm not equipped to be patient when I'm waiting on a decision as to whether I'm uh, an acceptable applicant. Anyways, time to go to the parts store. All right, we're ready to test. Turns out, is that plastic piece still down here? I think it took off. Turns out the hard shell connector for the headlight switch, one of the teeth that holds the tab in for the parking lights broke off. So I thought at first I was gonna have to go replace the connector, but then it wasn't in stock anywhere. I was able to just get it back up in there. It's this, uh, it's this brown wire here in the middle. But when I got it plugged back up in there, it seemed to connect and I just used the meter probe to uh, sort of push it up into place and I think it's gonna hold just fine. What I did was I cut this harness back and joined this extra wire here that we're gonna use to the harness, probably about here. And then I put everything all the way back in the harness, taped it all the way up, got it plugged in. And we've got this wire that basically just comes out right here. So now I'm gonna route this down and over and then we're gonna pick up this thing and I think we should be good. Then we should be able to get this all zip tied back up and put the wiring away. Need to tape off these two. Actually, since I'm in here, um, I'm gonna look through the wiring and see if there's anything else I wanna hook up since I'm already here doing stuff. But yeah, making progress. All right, we're done. A verified operation just to make sure that everything's good to go. This is our fuse here for the parking light output. Uh, this one, I think that's for one of the accessory outputs. And then since this wire was pretty big up here, I wasn't sure of the amperage pull, but everything on this van has been converted over to LED, headlights, taillights, running lights, marker lights, turn signals, all that stuff. Uh, so we're not pulling very much amperage, but uh, yeah, 10 amps is the maximum output that this thing can handle. And that's what that fuse is. So yeah, I think we're good to go. I'm gonna get all my tools cleaned up and we're gonna test it now that it's completely done. Yeah, I, I've had weird things occasionally where when you're testing it and it works, but then when you get it all put back together, then it stops working. Um, anyways, oh, so I was looking around. Turns out I actually broke two of the tabs off of that headlight switch, which isn't necessarily my fault. That just kind of happens with age. So I think it would be a good idea to check the rest of these connectors and make sure they are all properly seated and uh, looks like that one wire in the corner might be a little weird. So we'll just use the uh, just use the meter probe here. What I can do is just basically poke the corner of the metal connector like this. There we go. Now it's plugged back in all the way. I don't know if you saw that or if it's in focus or anything, but. Yeah, that one was not 100% connected. So yeah, now we're good. In theory, that hard shell connector should be replaced, but there's not enough vibration in the setup typically to uh, cause an issue with that. So yeah, let's uh, pack everything up and test it. Oh look, it's a van. So theory of operation here says that those should blink some amount of times when it starts the startup process and then they burn solid once it's actually on. So let's see here. Hey, it looks like we're good. Let's check the taillights. Yeah, looks like we're good to go. Sweet. Might as well run the lift back up while the engine's running. I'm hoping the government's gonna stimulate a new battery into this thing here soon. All right, there's one other thing I'm gonna do today to help with, uh, I don't know, stress relief or mental state or whatever. But there's a qualifying clip that you have to see first before you'll understand what's going on here. Now, keep in mind, the clip I'm about to play was filmed just before I found out I was getting booted out of this place. Uh, it was before the last video that I uploaded. Anyways, 
Um, here we go. Um, yeah, so there's something in the garage. Look what I found. It's one of these things. It's a power soccer chair. Uh, brand new. Got the cushion here. The guard's still out in the back of the van. I'll have to um, uh, get that out of there. But went across town and uncrated this thing today. So, um, yeah, it's a soccer chair. Power soccer is not currently going on, which means I've got this thing at my disposal for a little while. If you're not aware, power soccer is a very interesting sport. These chairs here, while they look unassuming, unless you know what it is, um, yeah, let me, let me get some of the plastic off of this and I'm going to hop into it and uh, we'll, we'll record a couple of clips. There's, if there was a Dodge Viper of the wheelchairs, no safety features, all the throttle. It does exactly what you tell it to. Does wheelies and burnouts. <laughs> All the things a good wheelchair should do. <laughs> That's right. We're going to run around in the soccer chair a little bit. Now, this is asphalt and concrete out here, so I have to be careful with the tires. There's a section further down the road that is brand new, uh, perfectly smooth paved asphalt and it won't hurt the tires or the casters or anything. So we're going to go nice and slow on the way out there. And then uh, these motors need to be used a little bit. They should probably be nice to them, right? You know, just kind of tell the brushes and stuff break in. So I'm going to get a little bit of time on this thing. I'm not going to go nuts or anything, but we're going to run out a little bit just because these things are stupid fun. <laughs> And yes, this thing is not adjusted for me, so this is not normally how you'd have your feet when you're running around in one of these chairs. So we're going to go nice and slow here so we don't hurt the casters. But yeah, these things are stupid fun. Um, even if you're not playing soccer. <laughs> yeah. And again, I'm not going too nuts because I want to be careful with the tires and stuff on this. It really needs to be a flat surface like down there at the end of the road or like on concrete or like this right here. I think we're good. <laughs> oh man. Anyways. I probably screwed around for enough this afternoon, got the van worked on, played with this thing a little bit, chatted up some people out here. I'm going to get back online and see if there's any new listings that have come up. And, uh, yeah, good times. Oh, man. By the way, John, when can I come out to your place? We need to uh, get our soccer chairs going and uh, practice, if nothing else. It's considered uh, necessary for the sport. You gotta keep your skills up, right? Call me. <laughs> oh, and I almost forgot. There's one other really cool thing in this lunch bag uh, that we're gonna have to play around with. So we have two of these things now and soccer is not gonna be going on, well, for a little while anyways. So I pilfered this thing. This is a speed trap. Oop. This is like a speed trap measurement system here. What this thing does is it's got uh, it's got some sensors uh, with some beams and stuff on it, a whole bunch of wiring. And this thing allows you to very accurately check the speed of your soccer chair to make sure it's within regulation. But since we have this, we can use it to check the speed of like say this F3 or the Bounder or the Quantum 6000Z over there, which currently doesn't need batteries in it. But I think it'll be really cool to be able to actually get a definitive answer on how fast some of these chairs are going and see how it stacks up with the math I've done in the past. 
Although the last time I did that was with the forefront and we sent that thing back to the glue factory. I don't know. Anyways, something fun to play around with for now. And uh, we're not going to need it for at least another few months. No idea when soccer's starting again, but yeah, there you go. That's where I'm at. Staying busy. We're going to call that a video, I think. So I'll catch you guys soon. Oh yeah, if there's any updates, I'll definitely let you know. Um, I'm hoping now it's going to be tomorrow that I'll hear back on the house. We'll see. Whatever. Later. Later.